welcome everyone my name is Samantha Jones and you've just tuned in to a better me YouTube channel um, so for one I apologize it's been a long time since I've posted a video uh, I was about to come up with an excuse but there really is no excuse um, just a lack of consistency and planning um, which is something I'm working on so um, thank God I was able to record one today and prayerfully it's not a long video um, it actually can't be a long video because I have to go soon and um, singleness is something that I actually love to talk about even though I am a married woman um, I was single before I got married and um, I think it's a very important season in a woman's life especially in her walk with Christ and so I just want to dive right in and just discuss some things about singleness, some things that God laid on my heart, but also I talked to a few single women about things that they would like me to address. And so I got some feedback um, as far as that is concerned. So I'm really excited about this video. And um, yeah, I just pray that uh, it really touches someone, it encourages someone, it answers some questions. And definitely if you have any questions or any feedback, please comment below or you can email me. Um, so just to jump right in, um, I shared in another video actually a little bit or my story about singleness. It's in another video called um, My Best Friend and I, like our testimony. I can't remember the title, but it's a video that my best friend and I did about um, singleness and a little bit about courtship. And uh, we touched a little bit on marriage, but most of our focus was on singleness and uh, kind of like the pact or the agreement we made with each other before the Lord as far as our singleness was concerned. So if you want to know a little bit more about like my single story, um, you can look at that video. But um, what I really wanted to talk about today or one thing that I want to go ahead and start off with is kind of like my former disdain towards singleness. Like I could not stand being single at one point. Uh, I, I really didn't like it. I didn't like being alone. Um, I oftentimes found myself really depressed because I was single and it was really the fact that marriage and a husband was an idol in my heart. It was something that I really, really, really desired and it was something that I would think about all the time. I would daydream about it. It, it was an idol. It really was an idol in my heart and it was something that I thought about more than I thought about God, right? And so anything, idols are not just statues and you know buddha statues and um you know even physical people sometimes they can be desires of our hearts that we focus so much on that we kind of think about more than we even think about god um and so that was the first thing was that i hated being single you guys could not stand it and i knew that it wasn't okay i knew there was something wrong i knew i was talking about god i was supposed to be following god or not supposed to be, but I was following God, but there was such this, I was not content with the Lord. I know we talk about that word a lot, you know, being content, being satisfied with just God. And honestly, I wasn't. And I really noticed that, um, I think it was my sophomore year in college. And I, I think it was towards the end of that semester, that spring semester, going into the summer semester, where I really, um, had to come before God and like really pray about it. And I said, okay, God, and I shared this in my other video, but I said, okay, Lord, I am not content with just you, right? Like you are not enough for me. And I was being very honest before the Lord. And I just let him know, like, you're not enough for me, God, but I need you to be. Like I have made an idol out of having a husband. And I know this is a desire that you have given me. There's nothing wrong with this desire. Um, and, and that's the thing. There's nothing wrong with certain desires that we have. They're natural, right? They're desires that even the Lord has put in our heart. But two parts to that. One, um, it's a matter of what we do with these desires, right? It's a matter of what do I do with it? So the Lord has given me the desire of having a husband and being married, but he didn't give me that desire to make an idol out of it, an idol out of it. So that's the first thing is that, okay, the Lord has given you a desire, but what are you doing with that desire? Are you allowing that desire to be before your relationship with him? And then two, the other part is, okay, the Lord has given me a desire and he has shown me something, but we have to also understand timing as well, right? Um, 
we really have to understand timing. So even if the Lord gives me a desire, even when it got to the point, and I'll talk about it a little later, where the Lord finally told me, like, my husband is coming. And not only that, but, like, when my husband got here, that, like, okay, this is your husband. Nate is your husband. I had to understand that even though the Lord showed me something, if I tried to pursue something out of his timing, then it was still not in his will. I was still walking in disobedience, right? Because he may have shown me this, but it doesn't mean that it's for this season. So... And kind of the first thing I wanted to hit on was that if you are not enjoying singleness, if you don't like being single, I understand. I was there at one point as well. Um, but the thing is, is that once you realize that I don't like this, I, I don't like being single. I, in fact, I hate it. And I'm making an idol out of having a husband or being married. Then you really have to take it before the Lord. And you really have to pray, to be honest, and say, like, Lord, this is, this is what it is. And I just need you to help me. And so that's the first thing was that I understand if where you're coming from, if, um, you know, singleness is something you're struggling with. Um, but then also just kind of the prayer that helped me get to the point um, where I enjoyed my singleness. And literally, it didn't take a long time either, right? So I was struggling with singleness. Um, I think that was spring 2013. It was my spring semester being a sophomore in college. And then by the time I got to the summer, I had really sought the Lord. I had fasted on it. I had prayed on it. By the time I got to the summer and went home for our uh, for summer break, y'all, I like it was literally, I don't know, it changed like overnight. I was head over heels for God, like literally. And it may, you know, some people may say like that can't happen. Yes, it can. It happened, right? One minute I hated being single and I, you know, let me not say it was overnight, maybe a few days, a few weeks, maybe a month or so. But I know by the time I went home for summer break, uh, summer 2013, um, literally a change had taken place in my heart and the Lord really had heard my prayer. He really saw my heart's desire to be content with him and him alone. And it had gotten to the point where I was so content with God that literally I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you never send me a husband, like when I say I was so, that's something, you know, we can't fathom as women to ever say to God, like, oh, if you never send me a husband, I'm good. But literally, I had said that to God. I said, if you never send me a husband, like, I am good. I was so obsessed with him. I was so satisfied with him. The next thing I want to get into is maximizing your singleness. So when I finally got to the point where I was content before the Lord, I was like, look, it is time to live for God. Like, we ain't got no time to waste. You know, when my husband comes, he's going to come. And, and that's it. I'll never be able to get singleness back. So I need to enjoy. I need to maximize this time. So literally, one of the things that was really big for me, and it's something I'm still making sure I do in my in my marriage, is I went on dates with God. And then when I say I went on dates, like I would dress cute, do, you know, do my hair and go out with the Lord. Because one thing God had to show me is you want me to send you a husband, but yet like I should be your husband, right? If you're not married, understand, well, technically you are, right? The Lord is, is who your spouse is, right? If you do not have a physical partner yet, and even when you do have a physical partner, the Lord should always be the, the first man of your heart, like, and understand when I say man, right? But he should be like your first love. So even in marriage, he is still my first love. My husband is not my first love. The Lord is my first love. So, sorry, back to the dates. I really started to maximize my singleness and really just started to enjoy my relationship with God. So I started going on dates with God and it had to be really intentional. Um, I remember one date where, I think I was going to the Waffle House because I ain't had no money, right? I was a college student. And I think I had like sweatpants on and like some flip flops and had my Bible. And the Lord was just like, if you were to go on a date with your boyfriend, like, would you wear flip flops and sweatpants? And I was just like, no, I would dress cute if you finally sent me my man, even though I'm, I'm content. But if you decide to, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know. So the Lord was just like, okay, well, treat me how you would him. Right. And and that's kind of how I guess the Lord was preparing me for my husband, even though I wasn't focused on getting a husband. He really had to like show me, he said, Samantha, treat me as you would your husband. Right. Treat me as, you know, you would if I sent him into your life. And so he was like, go back in the house and change. So I put on like a cute dress and like flip flops and got nice and really had to be intentional about my time with God. And so dates was something that really helped me. Um grow not just on a spiritual aspect, right, as his daughter, but really understanding, like, what relationships entail, and it sounds weird, but, you know, just even little things the Lord would, like, show me to do towards him, it was preparing my heart 
to be with a man. So even just how was your day, God? Learning to to really listen for God um, and, you know, learning to have these conversations with the Lord. You know, we may not realize it, but or I didn't realize it, but like little by little, like that was preparing my heart to be with someone, right? The fact that I knew how to show this respect to God. I knew how to listen and, and be obedient, right? Some of us want to be in a marriage, but the Lord tells us to do something. First of all, we don't even stop to listen. And then when we do listen, we, we, we're we disobedient. We do what we want to do. We don't submit, right? But yet we want to be married. And let me be honest, I, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm still striving by God's grace, but submission is a big part of marriage. And that's a whole nother video and we'll get there. But Basically, you have to be able to practice a marriage now with God. Don't wait until you're married, right? And that doesn't mean focus on it because, I, like I said, I wasn't, like, super focused um, on, you know, getting my husband. But I learned how to really kind of prepare for that next season without focusing on it by focusing on my walk with God and treating him as my husband, treating him as the first love, which he really should be in my life. But, um, yeah, another thing I want to hit on as far as maximizing your singleness is travel, right? I love traveling. Um, and I used that time before I got married to go on a mission trip. I went to Uganda for 14 days and, you know, me and my girlfriends, my other sisters in Christ, you know, beach trips and just driving and going to hang out, like maximize your singleness, have sisters fellowships over your house, hang out, you know, do sleepovers, like really just have fun. And don't, and that was another thing I had to realize, you don't have to wait until you are married to start doing things. I remember my best friend and I would like get dressed and go to like a jazz um like a jazz cafe or to like a museum like really just you don't have to wait for someone to do things find a sister in christ that is also single or maybe even if she's not single and go out and have fun right maximize your singleness um use that time to really get healthy I remember when I had my list for my husband, I was like, he got to be super healthy and he got to have a six pack. He got to have this type of body. And the Lord was just like, um, where, where's your six pack? You, you want somebody that's healthy, that's going to help you to be healthy, but you eating fried chicken all the time and always eating out. Learn how to cook. So the Lord really got on me that summer about learning how to cook. And like I said, I think at that time, the Lord hadn't even told me my husband was coming, but he just started preparing my heart slowly but surely. So I started learning how to cook for my mom and my dad and my brother, like cooking for them, taking care of them, you know, helping around the house more, like really stepping up, um, you know, not waiting for someone to get on me. My mom would have to like get on me to help her around the house, like really just trying to step up and, and do what I should because it was preparing me for that next phase. So... You know, like I said, as far as health, being healthy, like use that time to, to really get healthy, especially as a woman. Um, and I'm not trying to get into gender roles and all that, you know, all those other things. Um, definitely men can cook as well. My husband cooks as well. Praise God. Um, but for me, going into marriage, cooking was something that I really wanted to be good at. So I really took that time to learn how to cook, right? Um, I didn't take any cooking classes because I didn't have money for cooking classes, but YouTube was my cooking class. And I learned from my mom. I started asking her because my family's from Jamaica. So I was like, let me learn more about my culture. Let me learn about the food from my culture so that I can implement that in my family one day. Being content and satisfied with the Lord First of all, it's something that we have to implement in every area of our lives, not just relationships, right? We should be content and satisfied in every area, right? I should not be comparing myself to other women in the body that they have. I should be content and satisfied with what I have. And if I don't like it, then I should take the steps to make changes that are healthy um, to get the changes that I would desire. Um, but I should be content and satisfied with my life or, you know, where God has me with the job he has me at, you know, not saying it's not, you know, that it's bad to strive for more or, you know, to go further to other levels. That's great. But at the end of the day, um, there has to be a, con a contentness in our heart. There has to be just a, a satisfying we have to be at a place where we're satisfied. So that's one thing I just want to point out um, that, you know, being content and being satisfied is not just about relationships. It should be in every area of your life. So seek that in every area. But then also when it comes to your relationship and your singleness, as far as being content and being satisfied, it's not just something for singleness. You have to be content and satisfied. In your is it's really me, right? You're, you're, you're looking for him to fill this void in your life that really is a place where you need to sit before me so I can fill you up, Samantha. Like, he's not God. He's your husband, but he's not God.